So for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Caitlin Pena. I am the Director of Operations and Programs for the Center for Election Science. We are a nonpartisan nonprofit uh, dedicated to empowering voters with uh, voting methods that strengthen democracy. So the main thing that we advocate for is called approval voting, and it allows you to vote for as many candidates as you like, and the candidate with the most votes wins. Um, and we've got today uh, Kunal Goyal. He is here from Ballot Ready. He's a business development representative, and he's going to fill us in on um, how we can make sure that we are able to vote safely and uh, vote informed this election. Um, so thank you so much for attending, Kunal. Thank you, Caitlin. And, you know, thank you to Center for Election Science. We're obviously sort of partners in this space, but um, I can definitely say we're big fans of you all um, at Ballot Ready and love the topic of this call and love the work you all are doing. So I appreciate you having me. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we, I, I love the work you guys do. It's really important to make sure that voters know how to vote in the first place and then also that they know they're informed about everybody all of the people who are on their ballot and all of the issues because so often we go into the polling booth and we're just thinking about you know the president or the governor or some of those top line races and um people aren't always ready to vote on these random you know city council members or judges or those sorts of things. So I think it's really helpful to have a tool uh, to be able to know what's gonna be on your ballot ahead of time. So you can vote on every issue and every person. Um, and I think this year, so it's an election year, obviously people are always concerned about making sure that they can vote. Um, but this year things are even uh, more uncertain, even Absolutely. more different uh, because of the pandemic. States are changing the things that um, they're changing their their requirements. So some of them are expanding vote by mail. Some of them are expanding the absentee ballot access. Um, and so I'm curious, like, what have you all at Ballot Ready been hearing from folks on the ground or organizations yeah. that you work with about um, what what people are going through this year as far as voting? Well, absolutely. And, and you nailed it on the head, you know, to start, as you mentioned, it's already difficult for voters to know about their down ballot candidates, to know their rules. Even pre-pandemic, that was already a sort of, sort of a challenge of ours. And what we embarked on doing was making it much easier for every voter, regardless of what state or county you're in, to be able to find the information you need to vote and to vote informed. And just as you mentioned, that challenge has, you know, grown exponentially this year. Um, due to the pandemic, changing voter rules um, at the county level, at the state level, at the federal level, um, and then also a perception problem as well, right? So, um, you know, if you look at certain polling data, um, people feel worried about voting this year. They feel uncertain um, about, about the vote. Um, and yeah, that's exactly the gap that we want to help fill and that our partners want to help fill um, is that uncertainty, but nonetheless, that desire that people have to vote and be engaged this year and to um, be informed. Um, what's interesting is that in terms of you asked like what we hear on the ground and, um, you know, what, what that looks like is the, the reality is that we just have to turn out the vote as much as possible, right? We, we have to do what we always do in that sense. And that is make all the data that is out there easily accessible people to people, provide people with their options on how to vote, um, you know, whether it be by mail, drop off, in person early, in person on election day, give voters their options, let them make a choice for themselves on how to vote. Um, you know, there, it's very difficult for Ballot Ready or for any of our partners, customers, users to account for a lot of the issues that are going to occur within county election offices, within certain institutions um, that we ultimately have no control over. The best we can do and the best that we do is we just try to be as communicative with county offices that we work with, um, with different services we work with in terms of vote by mail, um, and just be clear about our goals. Um, so ultimately, you'll hear it all the time, but through all the uncertainty, through all the changing rules, our goal remains the same, and that is just to help people vote. Um, and you know what happens on election day or after election day is not totally within anyone's control. Yeah, I think um, 
I think focusing on getting the information that we are able to get and controlling the things that we are able to control is really important right now, right? There's so much uncertainty and there's so much that feels out of our control um, that just getting the information that we can get is really important. And so we're, we're about, I think 47 ish days maybe away from, from election day on November 3rd. So seven weeks. That's Yeah. Seven weeks, seven weeks. Um, So for anyone who hasn't registered yet, is there still time? How can they find out how to register? Absolutely. Um, There is still time. Um, It depends on what state you are in. So um, registration deadlines vary from state to state. Um, registration is coming up soon. I would say the majority of states have registration, registration deadlines in mid-October. Um, so there's a couple ways uh, which you can find, find out this information. So one thing I do want to say, too, that I didn't mention is that Ballot Ready is a nonpartisan organization. Mm-hmm. And we are, we are literally nonpartisan. And what I mean by that is that all the data that's available through our website is sourced directly from county election offices, from the state, and then from candidates themselves. So there is no piece of data on the website that comes from anything but the source that is directly presented. Um, And that goes to for everything, registration, vote by mail, we work with county election offices and and that's what makes it nonpartisan. But anyway, um, two ways. So the, the first is um, the non-ballot ready way, which I just will offer up in, in case it's useful, is um, to visit your state, um, your Secretary of State website for your, for your whatever state it may be. So for me, I'm in Georgia. You can just type in Georgia SOS. Um, you can also, um, most states, I should say, when you go, when you click on that link, will have a portal. It's not always the most user-friendly portal. It's not always the most easy to understand, and we'll get into that already in just a second, but um, almost all states should have a portal where you can check registration and then get registered directly. Um, again, it varies from state to state, so I don't want to give a blanket coverage of, like, you can do this no matter what. Um, but um, so most states do have portals. Um, you can also call your county elections office. So again, the best way, if you're not going to use a, a voter tool, would be just to Google your county and just the words elections office and a number should pop up and you can call and confirm that. With that said, to simplify all that process, um, you can also go to ballotready.org and type in your address into our tool, into our widget, and pull up all the the information you need. Um, I'm happy to go through that now if you'd like, or shall I go ahead and share my screen? Yeah, sure, go right ahead. You should have uh, screen sharing privileges. Fantastic. All right, so are we looking at the right screen here, hopefully? Yep. Awesome. So this is ballotready.org. My Wi-Fi has been a little funky, so bear with me. Hopefully everything goes the way we hope. Um, You can get here, type in www.ballotready.org, Google ballotready.org, ballotready. It should be the first thing that comes up. And you can see right away there's this um, bar um, where you can type in your address and hit get started. There's a bit more to the website. Um, We can talk about that later, but for now, we'll go ahead and try this out. So I will go ahead and type in my address and hope that no one shows up at my door. Um, So you just got to select your address, hit get started. And yes, so our tool is called the Election Center. This is a new tool actually for us in 2020. Um, basically, we had all these separate tools for separate tasks, just as Caitlin mentioned, researching your ballot, finding out registration. We figured, okay, let's put it all together in one. Um, when it first starts, it comes up with a little prompt with a little helper, helper to guide you through. I'm going to exit out of that because today I'm your helper to guide you through, so we're not going to need that. Um, so you can see here, hopefully, um, this is easy to see, and I'll make sure it's all that we've organized it so that it goes in sort of the order of all the steps of what you need to do to vote and vote safely and vote informed. Um, In this first panel, you can see the very basics. So you type in your address. My next election is Tuesday, November 3rd. And simply for typing in your address, it gives you this sort of you are 20% ready to vote. The idea here being that um, people like seeing a progress bar. People don't like seeing an unfinished progress bar. So, um, you know, we all want to just make sure we're finishing our plan. 
So the first step, and I know you mentioned registration, so we'll get to that, Caitlin, but um, one step is you can pledge to vote. This is sort of the simplest tool that becomes it's kind of available all year, where you can just sort of commit, sign, give a reason why you're pledging to vote in this election. Um, useful for times like June, July, um, you know, keeping people engaged. Um, so, you know, if if anything, please come and pledge your pledge to vote. And then you also I have this I check your register. About that real quick, I think I have actually heard that there's research that shows that even just the act of someone saying, I am going to vote this election, increases the chance that they actually follow through and do vote. And, that, and that's exactly right, and that's exactly why we have it. And, and you know, it's, it's not the most dynamic part of this process, but you're absolutely right. You know, just by saying you're going to vote, committing to it verbally, digitally, um, it makes a big difference. And it's helpful to, um, to get an idea of how many people are committing to vote. You know, what is the, the excitement like? Um, so absolutely right. Um, and then there's the check, the check your registration box. So if you go to ballotready.org, um, you type in your address, it will help you walk through checking registration for that specific address. Um, depending on your state, and we, we won't finish this flow just for now um, because I am, hopefully, I, I'm quite sure I'm verified and um, registered. But one thing you'll notice is that this flow will vary from state to state. So Georgia was fairly straightforward in terms of registration. We were able to check that ourselves. Some states you'll see that it'll take you to the, vote, um, the state portal instead. They prefer that they do it on their site. Um, so it's configured differently for all 50 states, and that makes it usable for voters in all 50 states as well. Um, so just keep in mind, we're going through the Georgia flow right now, but that may or may not be what you see exactly um, for your check registration. So it's whatever is most readily available. Gotcha. That's, that's super helpful. And so the, I, I see the next step is requesting a ballot. And that was, that was one of my next questions is, you know, there are some states that are 100% vote by mail. There are some states that um, are expanding the access to ballot uh, or, or to absentee ba ballots. So states where normally there are only certain requirements that you have to meet, now um, more people can, can have access to that. So um, yeah, what, what's that step to request your ballot uh, if you want to vote by mail or absentee? Absolutely. And, and you're, you're right again, all these rules have, have changed somewhat. Um, a record number of states will have vote by mail option this year. Um, I actually think just today, a new state opted in for some form of vote by mail. So up to 46 states that are offering vote by mail. Um, some states, I think it's four states, including Washington and Colorado, send absentee ballots to all registered voters. Um, so that's also important to know. Um, Recently, a few organizations have pushed out vote by mail, including the United States Postal Service and Washington to Colorado became upset because the wording did not apply to their system. So you're absolutely right. There are tons of caveats and different rules. Um, with that said, again, we put together this FAQ page for voting by mail. Um, you can go to about.ballotready.org slash FAQ and just very straightforward for your state. I'll do Georgia again because I'm partial. Um, you can find out all the very important details you need, all the dates, um, whether your state has vote by mail. So there are some states that offer um, conditional vote by mail. So you can only vote by mail if you, um, you know, qualify based on certain criteria, you're a veteran or something like that. Um, and then there are states that have no excuse absentee voting. Um, Georgia is actually an example of one, one of those states. And on this FAQ page, you can see, um, so let me break it down actually just a little bit farther just because I, I do want to be clear on this. So there's a couple steps to vote by mail. The first is getting registered. The second, and these are the basics, but the second is to apply to vote. So we mentioned only four states send out ballots automatically and all the other states you need to apply in order to get a ballot and vote by mail. And we can talk about that application process in the tool just a little bit. Um, so you have dates on when is the first day to apply, when is the last day to request a ballot to apply. Once you apply to vote by mail, you wait and your county election office will send the ballot to you in the mail along with a return envelope. Um, 
Some states stamp their return envelopes, some states don't. That's another thing to keep an eye on. But you get that ballot in the mail, you fill it out, you put it in the return envelope, you put it in the mailbox. And can't emphasize this enough, everyone hears it all the time, do this as early as possible. Um, you know, there will be a lot of people who will attempt to request ballots in mid-October and it's a fine line, you know, that that's when you want to be returning your ballots at the latest. So, um, you know, it says here, you know, for example, in Georgia, when is the last day to request a ballot? Friday, October 30th. Okay, but you have to get your ballot returned postmarked by November 3rd at 8 p.m. So you, what you have to ask yourself is if you apply that late, do you think you're going to get a ballot and be able to return it by then? So here are all you know, the rules per state. They are being updated, but I encourage you, if you're interested in voting by mail, to check out your dates, mark your calendars, um, and then we can also talk about the, the tool itself um, if you're interested in that. But yeah, any, any other questions on vote by mail, Caitlin? Um. I don't think so. Not right now. It's it's such a it's, it's such a state by state thing that it makes it difficult to say this is what you're going to do or this is what the the rules are because literally every single state is different. Um, and I think what you emphasized about requesting it as early as possible is really important. I know I was listening to a podcast last week with the Secretary of State um, or the the Deputy Secretary of State um, for Ohio. And they have, similar to Georgia, um, their uh, request date, I think, is, um, it's actually that Saturday, so October 31st. And he's like, the, the Deputy Secretary of State has been asking for that to be moved up because he was even saying there's no way for us to even get those ballots to you that fast. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy that we even have this as our, as the deadline because it's, it's just about impossible. So request it as early as you possibly can. Absolutely. And, and also when you get your ballot too, you know, if you get it a little bit late, one key thing, and again, we'll mention as always this amendment that it does vary by state, but for most, for most states, it just needs to be postmarked by November 3rd in order right. for it to be counted. And the reason that's important is that you might be a little bit better off if you get that ballot late not dropping it in a mailbox, but instead going to the post office and having them kind of just doing it there because they'll postmark it right away. So even if that mail doesn't get delivered until maybe a few hours after, because that postmark will be set, the ballot will count. Um, so that's another, another tip too. Yeah, actually another question that I just thought of with that is, I know that a lot of states, I don't know if all of them do this, but a lot of them have the ballot drop-off boxes and or you can take your ballot and drop it off at the polling place. Um, do you know any more information about that or how yeah. people can find those details? Absolutely, so it, it gets tricky quickly. Um, yes, you. one great option is also dropping off. So you apply to vote by mail, you get your ballot, and instead of mailing it back, um, there are various drop-off locations um, in, in your county provided by the county office. Usually the county election office itself has a drop-off location. Mm -hmm. And there are certain dates, some are 24 hours, some are limited, where you can drop off um, your ballot instead. Um, again, you know, for me, I'm always going to encourage you to go to ballotready.org um, in the request a ballot flow, um, as well as the find a, find a polling place flow, you can also find drop-off locations. And you can sort of make a plan for yourself. So you can choose your time, choose your location, email it to yourself, and you just have that information. It also provides directions. And we can potentially look at that in just a second, depending on what's available through this flow um, as of now. And then, Caitlin, you mentioned as well, um, people who apply to vote by mail, but then choose instead to vote in person. Um, this does happen, you know, probably, um, I think in the Georgia primary, there were about 500,000 voters who applied to vote by mail, but instead decided to vote in person. Again, I just use Georgia as a reference, but um, either in per early or on um, the primary election day. Very, rules vary by state. Um, this is one where we are still collecting data on what the state rules are. So it will be included as well in these frequently asked questions. Um, how to vote if you applied to vote by mail and instead want to vote in person. Um, 
as I mentioned, we're, we're still collecting that information. Frankly, a lot of counties and states are still determining those rules for themselves. Um, this is such a, a dynamic election with vote by mail. Um, so we're still collecting that, but most for most states, the rule is that if you apply to vote by mail and you wanna vote in person, you just have to bring that ballot with you that you got in the mail to your in-person polling location. That way you're not, don't have a ballot, you know, at home and a ballot at the polls. So again, Georgia, for example, you just bring that ballot with you and they'll get you set up um, in person. So that also is an option. It is out there if you apply to vote by mail, um, you can, for the most part in most states, vote in person should you wish. Um, and I'll add one more, one more thing to Caitlin, um, is that um, I think voting by mail and dropping off are safe choices. So if you vote by mail and get a ballot, and do a drop-off location, that's actually my preferred choice of voting personally. Um, but, um, you know, I just wanna express that like, these are secure ways of voting if you do it in time. Yeah, I think that's really important to emphasize as well. Uh, it's, it's completely secure. There are many states, um, as you mentioned earlier, who have been doing 100% vote by mail. Um, there's at least four, I think maybe now five states that do 100% vote by mail. They've done studies and um, the, the incidence of voter fraud is not any higher than what we see for in-person voting. And voter fraud in general is very, very, very small. Uh, it's, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of a percent. Um, so I think people should feel confident in voting by mail, voting absentee, and especially if they drop it off because then they know exactly when it got there, where it went. 100%. Right, awesome. Well, and so if people do choose to um, vote in person or maybe that's the only way that they are able to vote due to their, their state's rules, um, how can they find their polling place? And this year, obviously, people might need to be concerned about, is there social dis distancing enforced? Do I have to wear a mask? Am I going to vote from my car? Like there's lots of other things to consider as well. Absolutely, there are. Um, yes, so absolutely agree with what you said regarding vote by mail and voter fraud. Um, vote by mail historically has always been a secure way to vote. Um, you know, we started the year emphasizing vote by mail because of COVID, right? You know, yeah. that, that's why vote by mail is playing the role it does because people feel somewhat insecure, just as you mentioned, um, going in person. With that said, a lot of people are going to vote in person this year. Um, you know, again, just a recent poll doesn't anything can happen, but um, more than 50%, slightly more, are planning to vote in person either early on election day. Um, in terms of finding your polling location, again, would encourage you to visit ballotready.org. Um, there is the find your polling place box. When you type in your address, again, it's gonna pull up unique options for your specific address. It's geocoded all the way down to your address. You can see here, it says available soon. So right now, um, we are still collecting and states and counties are still determining early voting locations. Um, early voting actually starts tomorrow, I believe in two states um, and sort of gets rolling throughout the month. Um, and then obviously becomes pretty much um, widespread I think through almost all 50, now there are a few that actually don't have early person in voting, but the, the majority of states um, do have early in person um, that will get going in October. Um, states and counties are still determining that. Um, so if you're curious, if it's not yet available on ballotready.org, um, again, would recommend calling your county elections office if you're trying to find out that information. Um, you can also try their website. That's exactly where we get the information from. Um, and it's not always the easiest to use, um, so that can be tricky, um, but would encourage you to visit your county election office or call or come back to ballot ready in, in a week or a few days and um, find, find that information. Uh, in terms of election day polling locations, um, that's done a little bit differently. That you should be able to find um, on through your state portal. Um, so we are, also, we are still sourcing those um, as well, but um, they will become available through ballotready.org, um, at least with a few weeks to go. Um, but for most states, you should be able to, if you're, again, keen on finding your election day location right now, um, in the same portal where you check your registration, it should also tell you your registered election day voting location. 
Um, and unfortunately, I can't go through this flow of find your polling place because it's not available for, for my um, precinct in Georgia, but it does look a little bit like this, um, the request about flow. And here's another really useful page, um, by the way. If you click re request a ballot, you see your vote by mail information, um, the dates, how it works, who is eligible, and then the same thing for in person. So you get your early voting dates. Um, when you, if you click find your polling place here, it'll ask you to sign up for a reminder. So um, feel free to go to ballaray.org, go through this below, sign up for a reminder, and we'll text or email you when your location becomes available. Um, so that's a really great feature. But basically, it'll take you through a flow where you'll verify all your information, find your polling location. This obviously is for requesting your ballot, another incredible flow that allows you to apply to request a ballot digitally online. Um, but basically, there's a flow for each of the options that are presented here. Um, and that should do the trick to help you make a plan to vote and vote either by mail or in person. Awesome. Yes, I hope everybody will make a plan to vote, especially this year with things just being uncertain. Um, it's really nice to have this tool to, you know, get those reminders, have a, an email or a piece of paper that tells you that you requested your ballot or where your polling place is, that you have checked your registration and you verified it. If you're like me and you recently moved, that's really important to do. Um, so I, I hope folks will do that. And part of making that plan, as we talked about earlier, is just knowing what is going to be on your ballot, right? Um, so how, what are the tools that Ballot Ready has available for uh, seeing who the candidates are, what they stand for, and the same thing with referendums and initiatives? Absolutely. So Ballot Ready is covering the ballot in all 50 states this year. Um, it is very much um, underway. So counties are releasing the lists of their candidates for different races. Um, we're adding those lists, verifying them, and then conducting research on those candidates. Um, and we will provide a voter guide for every single address. Um, that's the goal anyway. Um, and yes, just same in the selection center, um, still on the same screen. If you look at research ballot, and if you click on that, it will take you to your personalized ballot guide. Um, and just to give you a really quick look at this, you can see on the left-hand bar um, all the candidates and measures that will be on, on, your, on your ballot. You can sort by the level um, of the races. And um, I believe we have finished candidate gathering, so these lists are finished, and then you can also see your measures too. And what you can do is you can click on the race that you're interested in, um, you can read a little bit about what that race is. Um, that's more useful, especially for down ballot um, positions that people are a little less familiar with. Um, and then you can see the candidates up for election in that race. You can click on a candidate profile um, and view the research, research that we have sourced so far for that candidate. Again, a process that is very much underway and will become much more robust. But for a big Senate candidate like John Ossoff, we do have some um, most information. We have all the social media links, a website link to the campaign website. I think that is as useful as anything, especially for some doubt and ballot candidates to just go to their social media and go to their websites. Not always easy to find. Um, you can see their experience, um, their education. Again, very key. This is all sourced from what candidates themselves provide. So um, none, nothing here, issue stances as well. So you can see where they stand on various issues broken up into specific categories. This, this wasn't me writing this. This, was, this is John Ossoff on his campaign. If you click on it, you can see it, it's hyperlinked. I won't do it right now, but it'll take you right to the spot in the site where we pulled this exact quote. Um, so you can see issue stances for different um, categories. And then you can also see endorsements, again, endorsements that he provided. Um, so you can see key endorsements. And should you wish to, should you decide, okay, this is my pick, you can also click add to my ballot and make a sample ballot for yourself. So what I would recommend is um, whenever, maybe a little closer to when you plan to vote, when you get your ballot after applying for it in the mail or a few days before you go to early vote, go to ballotready.org, type in your address, go to the ballot guide and just one by one go through and add in each, each race your ballot. You can save it, email it, print it, share it with your friends. And again, um, Caitlin, just as you mentioned, the real value of this is in the local candidates. We're still collecting data, but 
you know, being able to see, okay, who's up, who's up for election as my county sheriff, um, getting to read a little bit about her. That's the value add that we have as long as well as um, the measures here. So as I mentioned, you know, data research is underway, um, but we have, we'll have comprehensive ballots and I encourage you to go ahead and check it out as, as well already um, and start getting familiar with races, candidates. Um, and this is one thing, Caitlin, unlike many of the other things that I said that um, you can't find on county portals or state portals. So this is a very unique thing that we do um, and, and it's one of the big gaps we wanted to fill, something you mentioned at the beginning. So um, hopefully people find it useful and I encourage people to use it as much as possible. Yeah, I, I love this, especially for the the local race part and for the um, the ballot measures and initiatives, because, you know, so much of government happens on a local level. We just have all of this attention on, on the national races. And that's where, you know, the drama is and that's where people like to fight and complain. Um, but, you know, the things that affect us every day are being decided in our city governments and in our state governments. And so it's really important for people to be informed about that and be able to vote on those, uh, vote on those candidates and know who they are. And then, you know, similarly with the initiatives, lots of times there, are, there are important initiatives on a ballot and maybe you, you had never heard of it and you have to go read the ballot language on the ballot. And that's all the information you have. It might be difficult to understand. Sometimes that ballot language, um, the, the language of those initiatives is written in kind of some legalese, you know, and it can be it can be hard to decipher. And so getting this information ahead of time gives you the chance to read about it on ballot ready and then also do your own external research to know what's going on. Uh, absolutely. And and to your point, you know, you can't you can't totally blame the voter for having difficulty knowing what's on the ballot. It, it's not always readily available. So, um, you know, that, that's what this is for. And 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 yes, this is an opportunity to conduct your own research as well. And that's why we also just provide the races and and the names and keep it all 100 percent nonpartisan. Yeah, I love that. It's great. So if somebody wants to use this, I, it's available online and then is, there's also an app, I think. There actually is not an oh. app in oh, the wow. app store, um, but for some reason. Yeah. So it, there is a very mobile friendly version. So if you okay. Google about ready on your phone, it's designed, there's a whole different design for mobile. So it's very easy to use. Um, but yeah, would encourage you to go to ballotready.org um, on your phone on your computer. Um, and there's also the flip side of our company, um, which I'll just allude to really quickly, which is that we also um, provide that widget and this data to other organizations who um, help us reach different communities and different groups. Um, so we have both paid products and all, of course, all this data is available for free as well. So um, you may be using a ballot ready tool through another source and, and not know it. And that's great. And that's what we want. So, um, you know, this, this data will, will get out as much as possible. And, um, if anybody's interested in learning about, um, obtaining this data for your organization or these tools for your organization, um, you can also visit civicengine.com um, and find out a little more. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that, we should know or anything we didn't cover that, that you'd like to share? I, I think we covered, you know, a lot of the, the main things that, that we wanted to, you know, I, my, my sort of last word, I think would just be that, um, you know, I do think there is some fear of voting this year, um, despite the excitement. And I would just say, don't let that fear stop you, you know, go check your registration, request a ballot, if you don't want to request a ballot, vote in person, research your ballot, you know, do, do everything you can. Um, and, and if you don't, don't let it be that fear that prevents you from, from doing it, right? So, um, you know, excitement for this election is super high. I know there's uncertainty, but the only thing we can each control as individuals is to try to vote and vote informed. So um, hopefully ballotready.org provides the resources you need to do that. And um, even if it doesn't, that's no excuse either. So, um, but yeah, otherwise, like, I think we covered what we want to. And Caitlin, thank you so much for your time. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Kunal. And yeah, I will, I'll just reiterate that I hope everyone who wants to vote will go vote this year and that they don't let any concerns about safety or about security stop them. There are lots of ways. There's early voting, there's vote by mail, uh, depending on your state. Um, and if you have to vote in person, wear your mask, just stay far away from other people, but don't, don't let everything that's going on stop you from uh, expressing your opinion and having your voice be heard. Um, and as everybody knows, we love approval voting. We want to make sure that people are empowered and that their voices are heard. And so if you um, like approval voting, if you want if you want more people to be empowered with that, if you want to see more events like this one, um, you want to hear from more people, uh, we can always um, use contributions and support uh, from you. So you can go to electionscience.org slash donate uh, to help us out. Um, but thank you to Kunal. Thank you to all of our supporters who help uh, make these awesome events happen. Um, and yeah, go out and vote everyone. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. You too.